I would like to talk about the behavioral economics concept of inequality aversion. And the basic idea here is that um, what actually drives behavior is not money, but utility. It's sort of how people feel about certain things. And people can have utility about sort of the social context of their outcome. So it could be that people really don't like being in a situation where one person has more than another. Maybe that creates this social discord and people have actual real disutility over that social discord that comes from the inequality. And the way to think about this, I think, is to imagine a prisoner's dilemma, which I've set up, where economists are running an experiment. And in the experiment, if both people cooperate, they both get $8. If both people defect, they both get $4. So the payoffs in this table are actual money. They're not utility. But um, when you run this experiment, of course, you get an outcome that's not necessarily the Nash equilibrium if you interpret utility as being exactly equal to money, which is not how people work. So a lot of times you will get a situation where the people will cooperate, even though that wouldn't be the game theory outcome you'd expect. Um, unless people value something other than money. And one scenario might be that actually these two outcomes where one person cooperates and the other defects, those could actually be un uncomfortable. Like maybe the participants in the experiment are, are gonna like sort of give each other the stink eye if they end up in either of these because then they know one person has a lot of money and the other doesn't and that just creates, uh, like that's bad. It, it's it gives them both disutility. And if you actually build that into people's utility functions, um, the game theory may still work out. It's not that the game theory is false. It's just that the payoffs are not just equal to money. So let's, let's actually build a utility function that would capture this. And I'm just going to show you a very simple one. So in this situation, your utility for the amount of money you end up with is equal to your classic utility over the amount of money you end up with, but also this inequality factor, which is the difference between your utility, uh, your money and the other person's money. And this, of course, is um, the way I've set up this equation. It doesn't matter whether you're here or you're here. You're going to get a disutility of negative 12 in both situations. Now, you could adjust that such that you you really don't like it when you are the one with the zero and they have the 12, and you just don't like it a little bit if the other person um, has less than you. So you can make this function more complicated if you want, but I wanted to start out with a simple one. So this isn't a complicated utility function, but it will change the payoffs. So what I'm going to do next is map these uh, prisoner's dilemma payoffs onto this uh, game theory matrix, except instead of the units being dollars, the units are going to be utility. Okay, I've just plugged the, the dollar amounts into this function so that up here you get eight minus zero because there's no inequality. Here you get $12 minus 12 because the inequality is 12 units. So this turns into zero. And I did that with the rest of the table. Now we can recalculate the Nash equilibrium in this situation. Now there are two Nash equilibriums, but one of them is obviously better than the other, so the two people might be way more likely to end up here. And this actually could be a very simple explanation of what we see when we run these experiments in the classroom. That's just an overview of what inequality aversion is. I'm going to do a couple of other videos showing you particular models that add a little bit of nuance and come up with different types of uh, utility equations that might be at play.